What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video, man. So, we got to check out 10 WWE wrestling moves that should replace a finisher by WrestleMania. Y'all already know how I feel about some of these moves uh, that certain wrestlers do that I feel like should be finishers. And you see it on the thumbnail, man. Sami Zayn's Haluva kick. It's nice. I think it's a nice move, but it's not better than the Blue Thunder Bomb. And it was so great to see on Monday Night Raw this past week him actually winning a match with the Blue Thunder Bomb, which is super, super, super rare. I think the last time he won a match with it was against AJ Styles. I think when you guys had uh, sent me the sent me the clip, but that was years ago. He barely at all, rarely wins with that move, which I think is just such a good. It looks good. It looks devastating. You would think he would win with that. It's just a beautiful move all together. Like I said, the Huluva kick is cool. High impact. Looks devastating. But that blue thunder bomb, bro. It, it just gives that final, like, when it's hit. And you would think no one would be able to kick out of that. So we're going to check out some of these other wrestlers and their move sets that you, you would probably think should be a finisher, but it's not. Appreciate all love and support, man. Let's get right into there this. There are thing. certain moves that are incredibly impressive to look at, but for whatever reason aren't chosen to be a wrestler's finishing move. Yeah. Most of the moves on this list have been used as a signature move, but when the move is examined closely, it's hard to work out just why the move has remained as a signature move rather than be cemented as a legitimate finisher. Back, Join back. us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 incredible WWE moves that should have been finishers. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Kane's Diving Clothesline. Kane's moveset remained pretty straightforward during his WWE career, but one move that the former WWE Champion delivered always received a thunderous ovation. Whenever Kane ascended up to the turnbuckle and executed a picture-perfect diving clothesline, it always changed the pace of the match. Kane used this particular move throughout his career and it would have been a smart alternative finisher. Seeing a man of Kane's size and stature fly off the turnbuckle with ease was such a sight to behold and it's a shame that the move is rarely discussed. Yeah. Number 9, Elias' move. diving elbow drop. Uh, I, me personally, I don't know. I would consider that as a good finishing move. It's cool, but I, I prefer what he has now, so I don't know. I, I think it's kind of, it, in his case, I think it's better what he has now or what he had compared to the, the diving clothesline. That's just my opinion. Whilst Elias has always been able to obtain a solid reaction from the crowd, his finishing move has left a lot to be desired. Yeah. The drift away is basically just a swinging neck breaker, and yeah. it fails to hit the mark when it comes to being a standout finisher in WWE. Elias does have one move in his arsenal that is tremendously executed and has been compared to some of the all-time great mm -hmm. variations of the move. His top rope elbow drop is magnificent, as yeah, Elias it's... delivers it with grace and impact. Yeah, it looks good. This without a doubt should have been Elias's finishing move, as it would have ended up being one of the most celebrated finishes in all of WWE. Even though people have done the elbow drop, I think it would have fit his character more. You know, to have that grace and style, but that impact. You know, I, I think the elbow drop would have been a perfect, perfect uh, finishing move. Do we? Number eight, him. Daniel Bryan's Dragon Suplex. Well, the Dragon Suplex is one of the most underrated variations of the Suplex. The move looks incredibly brutal as the opponent lands on the oh. back of their head and the audible gas from the audience yeah. is a sign that the move is credible and legitimate. Daniel Bryan perfected the move and it should have been an alternative finishing move for Bryan during his time in WWE. His other moves such as the S-Lock and the Running Knee were fine, but adding this devastating move would have been a great choice. The move is still used on WWE television today with the likes of Chad Gable and even William Regal's son Charlie Dempsey using it in NXT. It'd be welcomed if a wrestler introduced this move as a finisher as it's a great move that should be given time in the spotlight. Uh, I don't know about that, especially for Daniel Bryan. Uh, that running knee, always a good setup, like a good, it would always get a, like a good popping reaction, especially if, depending on how they sold it. And, and also that, uh, the LaBelle lock was just always, it looks brutal. Someone tapping out that way. I think his moveset is fine. Of course, having the dragon suplex is cool, you know, in his repertoire, but I don't think it should be like a finishing move. It should be more of like a setup. 
to to you know what I'm saying ending on an opponent off number seven cody rhodes is cody cutter mm. the crossroads is a great finishing move for cody rhodes but it's his signature move that makes his move set yeah extra that cody special. cutter is rhodes nice is cody cutter is always delivered with exact precision and it's always receives a great reaction from oh, the audience yeah. it's a shame that rhodes uses the move for transitional spots as it's good enough to be a finishing move this move yeah. could have easily been a secondary finisher for Rhodes and it would be a great way of elevating his matches because Rhodes could potentially hit the move out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm I'm all with this being like a secondary finish finisher. It looks beautiful. Every time he hits it, the crowd gets activated. So I'm all for that being a a secondary finisher for sure. Rhodes promoting the move to finish his status may also help sell a potential future feud with his former mentor, Randy Orton. Yeah. Orton has used a former The Cutter as his finisher for 20 years, so WWE could potentially tell a Cutter vs. Cutter story, which would make for compelling viewing. Number I would six, be down for Seth that. Seth Rollins' suplex Falcon Hour combo. Mm. And one of the most celebrated wrestlers in WWE is Seth Rollins. Rollins can have a great match with anyone up and down the card, and over the years, he's modified his moveset to the point where he has one of, if not the single strongest movesets in WWE. Rollins' suplex and Falcon Hour combination mm -hmm. is without question one of his greatest moves, and it's one of the most visually pleasing moves in all of WWE. Rollins will perform a top rope suplex on his opponent before keeping hold of the front face lock and delivering a falcon arrow this move could yeah. easily be a new Love finisher for rollins as it looks unbelievable and the crowd absolutely loves it if he hits that like that going for ah oh, bro it it's like a double move in it's like a one move in, in like uh two moves in one motion that's what i was trying to say and it looks devastating i would definitely consider that as a potential finisher for sure for seth rollins it. The one thing that perhaps has held WWE and Rollins back when making this his default finisher is his work as a heel. He's been a heel for the majority of his time in WWE and the move is a babyface-esque move so it would make a lack of sense for Rollins to use a move which receives crowd applause. Nevertheless, granted he can definitely do it now because he's a babyface. During Rollins' time as a babyface, this should definitely be a move that is turned into a finisher but it'll be hard to find a fan of the former WWE champion that disagrees with this sentiment. Number 5. Roman Reigns' Rough Rider Whilst Roman Reigns' moveset is often criticised for being generic, there is one move that Reigns has delivered that should be considered his new finishing move for the head of the table. During mm. Reigns' acclaimed match with Jey Uso at the 2020's Clash of Champions event, Reigns delivered a move that was in essence a Rough Rider, aka oh, a Leg Lariat. Yeah. This move received widespread praise as it looks fantastic, and seeing someone of Reigns' size do a move of this nature was an impressive sight. Since 2020, Reigns' is He doesn't really do it much. That's the crazy thing. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I we obviously know the spear, the punch, or well, mainly just the spear. That's just that's just his thing. Or the guillotine choke. That's his thing as well now. But he rarely does that. I don't think he's done that this year. <laughs> has also added the guillotine choke as a secondary finisher. This was a great addition to his move set, and fans have reacted well to the move. There's no reason why Reigns can't have three finishing moves and it would truly round out his villainous persona if he had three completely distinct moves, as fans would never know how his matches were going to end. Which would be nice. Number four, Umaga's pop-up Smoan Drop. A debuting on the WWE main roster in 2006, in peace, Umaga was instantly presented as a major player. Over the next few years, Umaga crafted a legacy for being one of the greatest big men to ever lace up a pair of boots, and it's no surprise that fans and fellow wrestlers continue to campaign to see him inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Throughout his time using the Omaga persona, he would use a devastating finisher known as a Samoan Spike. Mm -hmm. Fans have always been split in relation to whether this was a good finisher, but there is universal agreement that one of Umaga's signature moves should have been an additional finisher for the former IC champion. Umaga's <laughs> most notable signature move saw Umaga pop his opponent into the air before yeah. bringing him down, crashing them to the mat with a sinister looking Samoan drop. This move looked insane, yeah. and Umaga could perform it on anyone. That there is an argument to be made that Umaga's move. version of the Samoan drop is one of the best variations of the move, and it's a huge shame Facts. that it was never used as a full-blown finisher for the Samoan bulldozer Definitely gimmick. Been a, Number three, a Sami Zayn's form. Blue Thunder Bomb. Mm. The Blue Thunder Bomb is arguably Sami Zayn's most popular move. Zayn isn't exactly a super heavyweight, so to see him master a master spin out power bomb on any opponent bro, is an absolute so joy. Bro. It's been a common consensus amongst fans that yes. the Blue Thunder Bomb <laughs> should be Zayn's finisher, but it looks like Zayn is happy with his finisher being the Haluva Kick. Interestingly, in 2000. 
2018, Zayn decided to experiment and switched his moveset around, as during a match with AJ Styles on mm -hmm. SmackDown, Zayn would use the Huluva Kick followed by the Blue Thunder Bomb to get the win. Sadly, this was one of the few times in which Zayn has used this combination, but hopefully one day, Zayn begins that to- That should be to set up the Huluva Kick straight into the Blue Thunder Bomb. Once you see him hit the Huluva Kick, go into the Blue Thunder Bomb, one, two, three. Ah. Uh. Please make it happen more often, Sammy. Use the beloved blue thunder bomb as his default finisher. Number two, John Cena springboard stunner. In 2015, John Cena decided to introduce a brand new move into his arsenal, yeah. the springboard stunner. Cena was often criticized for having a limited move set, so seeing Cena be able to do something Which that was, was crazy. fairly unique <laughs> was well received. Yeah, it was. Although Cena's version of the move wasn't the smoothest thing in the world, it stood out and it made fans appreciate Cena for trying something new. It was disappointing that the move wasn't used as a finisher, as the AA and the STF had grown stale as finishers, and the springboard stunner would have been a smart evolution of Cena. I get why some would want that to be a potential finisher, but in my opinion, John didn't really look that fluid doing it, but I appreciate him trying it and adding a little bit of freshness to his matches. Um, so I, I will not knock him for trying it. It just didn't look as fluid and it didn't look like, you know, it would be, um, I guess, John's finisher or it would be, I think it would be nice as a, maybe, it, well, it's kind of hard to be a setup move because John has to, pretty much <laughs> willingly just jump backwards and you know pretty much stun the person so i don't know i don't know I, me personally i probably wouldn't have made that his finisher but i am glad that he did add it to his move set at one point seen his in-ring style and number one baron corbin's deep uh, six since his run in nxt one thing that has been impressive about six baron is, corbin nice, is the sheer amount of spectacular looking moves he's able to deliver his finisher at the end of days Ooh. is heavily protected and was only kicked out for the first Once. time back at wrestlemania 38 whilst the end of days is a great move corbin's signature move known yeah. as the deep, deep six, six is, is considerably nice. better corbin that, performs a spinning back Ooh. suplex with speed and it looks insanely credible yeah. as a move what makes the move even more <laughs> impressive is that it's notoriously safe and Corbin modifies the move based on who he's yep. wrestling. This was seen during Edge's return at the 2020 Royal Rumble. He performed a deep six to the Raider R Superstar as one of Edge's first bumps in the match and Corbin handled Edge with extra care and precision. Well, there you have it folks, 10 incredible You know what? I, I have to agree man, Baron Corbin's deep six could be a finisher. I don't want him to get rid of End of Days because End of Days is beautiful. One of the best looking finishers and one of the most protective finishers still in WWE. Only one person is kicked out of it. And that's Drew McIntyre. That's it. So honestly, even though they've been treating Baron Corbin like a complete bum, he still has some of the best moves, wrestling move set in WWE. Uh, yeah, Deep Six, that could definitely be a finisher. I... I'm okay with a wrestler having multiple finishers, you know, because then you don't know how the match is going to end. It can end with a deep six. It can end with an end of days. It it, it adds a little bit more, um, you know, unpredictability on how the match, where the match is going to end. Oh, it can end right here. Oh, it can end right here. You don't know. So comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers you feel like um, some of the moves they that that they do their signature moves should be their finishers and do you agree with this list me personally i think the list is uh pretty spot on baron corbin's deep uh six definitely should be a finisher um sammy zane's blue thunder bomb what are we talking about definitely should be a finisher man so let me know down below any other wrestlers certain uh some of their moves should be finishers or not. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.